do you trust to cut legal migration? We're taking your calls 0207862222. Keir Starmer's pledged to lower the level of legal migration if Labour gets into power at the next general election. His shadow Home Secretary Yvette Cooper has refused to set a target, though, on how many migrants Labour would let in. So we're not setting a target, and the reason for that is because, uh, far, partly because, to be honest, every time the Conservatives have done this, frankly, then they have just ended up being totally all over the place, ripping it up, and it's discredited the whole but system. I'm asking OK, let's have a look at what legal migration is and what each party is promising to do about it. So we stress it's legal. We're not talking about the small boats crossing the channel in that sort of disorderly way. These are these are people who've actually got an agreement to come here. And at the end of 2022, is about 750,000. At the end of last year, about 685,000. So it's come down just a touch. But it's still like three quarters of a million. It's a big figure. Let's look at the party's policies. Conservatives with the paint roller first. And what is their policy? They're going to restrict dependence, so people who are related to migrants, and increase the skilled salary to 38,500, meaning you'd need a better job to come here. Then Labour, what, what are Labour proposing if they take power on legal migration? Let's see. Tackle business incentives, so don't allow any business to do something that drags in migrants, and ensure that Brits have the training to do the jobs. Of course, lots of other parties involved in this election. Let's start with the Lib Dems. Transfer powers over work visas, etc., from the Home Office and build up a special new unit. They're going to have a new unit doing it. SNP makes a general point. Migration is necessary for the NHS and public services. Greens similar. They support people who have to move because of climate displacement. And then Reform Party, which has Anne Widdecombe campaigning, our friend Anne campaigning for it has said the party will argue, there she comes, the current levels, hang on, of net migration makes housing unaffordable and they seek to link their core resistance to immigration to broader policy areas. Yeah, not sure really what that last bit means, but they've got the policy as well. OK, Mike, who's got the right one? Well, I don't think either party are committed to properly trying to stop immigration. Uh, it's unstoppable in my view now. The, the latest series of proposals by the, the Tories have come just years too late. They're only getting interested now because there's an election coming up, but they haven't shown any initiative in trying to stop it. It's, it's a huge industry in this country, immigration, if you take into account the um, legal migration coming to this country. For instance, it supports a massively prosperous university sector because students good, come and then they bring their families. Well, is it? Have we got the resources here to enable, to accommodate people who come over? I, I honestly don't think either side have got a policy, but if I had to pick one side or the other, I would have to pick the Tories because at least they are making noises about stopping immigration, whereas Labour opened the floodgates after 1997, OK? Before 1997, in the 10 years before, the total migration number was 68,000. In the years since, it's 5.7 million. It's as though the world hasn't changed since then. Um, I know that you want to go back to days where you keep saying stop migration. Yeah. You keep saying to stop it completely. I can't think no, of I anything don't. less sensical because you can't stop all migration, mm. OK? I do agree with you that both parties have a lot of work to do. However, your assertion that the Tories have got a better plan than Labour mm. is, is quite frankly laughable. Two reasons. Number one, yeah. because there is a bit more, a bit more of a joined up thinking when it comes to to the Labour Party. They know this has to be a cross-governmental uh, plan. You've got to get the Department of Work and Pensions uh, working with the Home Office to make, sure, to make sure that we get... Well, to make sure that... Well, this is the point. W one thing that Yvette Cooper has said uh, on Sunday that I thought was quite interesting is she said that we need to make... We need to make businesses responsible for the people they bring over. And the mm. five sectors that we get the most amount of legal working migrant visas in is engineering, construction, the care system and the NHS. These are people we need to run the country that you mm. want to prosper. Yeah. Mm. We need them. Now, the interesting point about Labour and what differentiates them, where was this idea from the Tories 13 days ago when they were in government? Well, I think, I think the salary cap, or rather 
saying you need to earn more to come here stopping yeah. migrants, was announced Jeremy, about a year ago. Jeremy, stopping migrants coming here is different to training Brits to do British jobs. Yeah, but that's, they are that's two different work. things. That's and the Labour Party yeah. are currently yeah. presenting a case where they say it's not just about stop migration, but what do we do with those spaces when we've got them? We have to fill them what, with Brits. Mike, and I what about agree the idea of saying the Green Party's right? The Green Party say, look, people are fleeing climate change. It's a different Let issue. them come. Yeah, a completely different issue. And there's no evidence that that's true. I mean, if Labour have got a plan for controlling migration, why don't they tell us what it is? Because Keir Starmer and his government have never, have I'll just, never I'll in just Parliament... Read it. I'll just read it to you. Excuse me, have never in Parliament supported any moves by the Conservative government and over the last 15 they? years. It's half-baked at They've best, never supported Mike. a single move. The Rwanda plan is a good <laughs> well, plan. And the reason it's a the good Rwanda plan, plan is because it's illegal. A it, it's, it's not for you don't it's not deport students that Mike, to you Rwanda. Don't see no, but the hang on, hang on. At the, the same two. time, that yeah. uh, the same time, there was a plan to cut three hundred thousand legals who are attached to people already here, families, dependents, and that. At least they've got a plan. At least they're working Where on is it. Where the Tory plan, to plan? Once the, you've okay, let's say tomorrow morning we wake up and we have this dream world that you want to live in, which is to stop all net legal migration. I didn't say who that. You keep saying that. What I'm Mike, saying is. You've got to control it. No? Who is going to take those jobs? What we about have the nine point? What about right. the nine point two five million people in this country who are economically inactive? They should Brilliant be idea. taking the so jobs. We have and to have joined that, that, but, but, but Mike, that's the Labour policy, right? Yes. To train Brits. They've to They've only do just come the up job. with that yesterday, if you don't mind me saying. You know, if the Rwanda plan is such a bad plan, why does that's Ursula really... van Leyen? Support it. She's the president of the EU. Why do countries like Switzerland support it? It's because it forms a deterrent which yeah, and focuses that, on sure. migrants. But Rwanda, the Rwanda plan is for people who arrive on boats. Yeah, We're but it still here focuses on legal. the migrant so issue the, in this okay. country. The, 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 the really important point to mention here is that businesses have done woefully little in terms of training uh, young apprentices or young people I to totally work agree. in that sector. And the, the main point is, and I didn't know this until today, and I'm shocked. I'm going to read more about it, but it says here that um, businesses can get up to 20% discounts from the government for mm. overseas recruits. Well, that's a Tory policy. Mm. So they are incentivised to hire people from outside mm. of the UK because they that's get a discount. That's to hire carers, mostly. Right. Uh, to yes, it, we and construction the workers. Business. OK, Fred yeah. is in Suffolk. Fred, what do you think? Who's got the best plan to cut migration? I think Labour has got the best plan. Um, what is it? There's a lot of people economically not active. I don't see no reason why we can't train uh, British people to do British jobs on British soil. Well, they might not want to. Uh, I mean, an example is, is fruit picking. We don't seem to have but that's not anyone who wants to do that. We don't get visas for that. We don't what get visas. We, don't, we, get, we get far more people coming in here as engineers than we do fruit pickers. OK, that's... sorry, Fred, go ahead. They all talk about penalising people that are... Uh, and not work, and they penalise the benefits, etc., etc. He talks about national service where they got a volunteer for this and volunteer for that. So why can't we use the same people to put them into apprenticeships, retrain them in the jobs that we need to cover, as opposed to bringing? Overseas workers in, mm. which cost an yeah. awful lot of money. Well, you like We've got that. to find them houses, which we haven't got. Nelifer said facts. I couldn't agree with you more. That's the joined up thinking I'm speaking but make, of. But it's not Making work. a plan for Britain rather for just migration. And this is the legacy that we are left with after 14 years of a Tory government. It's just we are we are we are almost we are forced to think of things in these tiny little holes. And I love what you're saying about actually using the British. I I I am violently allergic to people who, who say that British people don't want to do British jobs. I find that really reductive. So I really appreciate what you're saying. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. OK, Fred, thank you very much indeed. It, it'll take a while to train people up, right, as will. engineers. I mean, could it take 10 years or so? Or? It doesn't take any time to train a care worker. People come here and... Eight weeks. And, 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 uh, Eight weeks to what? That's how long you can train to become a care worker. That's how, that's how short instant. some of the so, programmes so, are. Eight so, weeks. So, so, that's okay. so, so, no, the, so you no, like this policy now? No, no, pol no politician will, you know, invest the time, the energy and the effort into trying to start a system to train people to be a care worker when they can simply keep the doors open, bring people in, eight well, weeks later... Unless you're well, Cooper, you've got a care worker. No, I, I, I think... And as I say, Labour have never voted against 
any proposition whatsoever to try and control All migration, right. legal or otherwise. More, more calls coming on this after the break. OK, hello again. Nilifa and Mike are with us this morning. We'll talk about Diane Abbott a bit later on as well. Uh, later, also, we're asking if celebrities should stay out of politics. There's been a bit of a to-do with Robert De Niro. Now, more calls as we try to work out who you trust most to cut legal migration. We've got all the policies we showed you there. 0207 862 Let's speak to Jade in Manchester. Hi, Jade. Hi, Jeremy. Who's got the solution, do you think, to this? Uh, me personally, the Reform Party. OK. Now, when I put the, the graphic up there, the, it was a quote from Anne Whittacombe. It didn't make much sense. What is their policy, do you think? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I just think Labour and the Conservatives have both had their time. They lie, they betray us, uh, they ignore us. So I'm, I'm going to vote for reform. I think they will be the party to stop. So you to want stop to say, because if the Conservatives really tank at the election, reform might. I know Farage was talking about a takeover. Mm. Do you think that's possible after the, ele the election, Jade? Um, I'm, I don't know. Yeah. I don't all, know. All right. Well, listen, thank you very much indeed for calling, Jade. Take care. All right. I, I just wanted to say as well before we go... Yeah. Um, another reason why I'm voting for the reform um, is because the, the way we are at the moment, the NHS waiting list crisis, um, housing crisis... My friend's living in a two-bedroom flat. She's having to share with her daughter and she can't get a bigger property, but yet you keep letting people in... My son's on a waiting list for braces. It, it might be another four years before he can get braces. Oh, it it's an absolute joke. It is. Uh, that They're is a joke. A joke. All of them. And people, I hear also, Jade, people who need mental health, you know, uh, counselling, they can wait 18 months for one 40 minute appointment. Mm. Jade, I'm so sorry. Thank you very much indeed for your point of view. Does that mean we're full? No, I don't think that the two are connected in the same way. I probably disagree with you, Jade, in that they're connected in the same way. I completely empathise and I sat listening closely to what you were saying, but I'm not convinced that they're connected. Well, we haven't got the houses. Way. We haven't got the health service. I'm not sure all the immigrants coming here are here for, um, you know, uh, braces or trying to take people's houses. No, but I we've think got to look after net them if migration, they come here. Net migration, net legal migration, which is all we have been talking about today, has all Correct. been legal migration, are people who come here with visas and they have to prove uh, that they can afford but if you bring themselves. your mum or dad, we don't. But if you bring it, you ha they don't get a council house, Jeremy. You and I both know that, don't but, we? But, but if they, you fall, uh, out, fall off your bike, you're going to go to A and E. Exactly. Yeah. So they they pay a stipend for that, which I agree with you is mm. nowhere near. I, do, I don't know whether. It, so, what, what do you think? The knock-on effects are horrendous. I heard of a, a housing development in West London was turned down by the planning local planning authority because it would overloaded the national grid in that part of town. That's how critical this country is in providing facilities in any way. Never mind hospitals but and schools and houses. You're joining power. two dots that don't no, even... No, I'm not. What, I'm saying, page, is, what I'm saying is unbridled, unbridled migration puts huge pressure on every aspect of British life. That's what I'm saying. Okay. That's why it's got to be controlled. Rob's in Cambria. Hi, Rob. Hello. Who's got the right policy on migration? Uh, well, I don't think any of the policies are any good, really. But I think um, Rishi Sunak backs up against the wall of his own party and reform. So I think he's more likely to do something about it. Um, the Labour Party, I don't think they really want to put a figure on it because I don't think the Labour Party being truthful with people. We actually need people to migrate. To you. We're an old population. Um, I think there's almost 25% of the country is um, over 60 um, so we need people to come in and pay the taxes. Um, so, and another thing, Jeremy, people need to stop getting confused with illegal migration and legal migration. If you stop legal migration, the lady who was on before me, there would be no doctors or nurses. Well, there would be, but a lot of the doctors and the nurses in our hospitals, they're migrated from legal migration in here. So we've got to... Get, get straight, legal and illegal migration is completely different. The legal migration, the people who we rob from other people. OK, okay uh, Rob, thanks. I couldn't agree with you more. I could not agree with you more. By, by, by mixing the, the legal migration with the illegal migration, we're almost tarring everybody with the same brush. Now, there's nothing wrong with being an asylum seeker. I was one. 
But that's not what we're talking about here today. We're talking about the fact that this country, in a, we should be thanking these people for coming here and doing the jobs that we can barely fill. There's a separate question about training British people for British jobs, and I agree with that. But you're right, the sentiment here is completely wrong. OK, Jack is in Cheshire. Hi, Jack. Hi, Jack. Good morning. Good morning. So I'm who's a, got I'm the a, right I'm policy? Go on. I, I'm a great believer in inspiration and aspiration, tying the two things together and making sure that every child in every school and every child in society feels important and what they want to do and what they can do is important. Whether they are Phil Foden or Phil Jones, you know, if you don't mind me using that name, down the road who's packing and stacking in a supermarket or in a warehouse, they're both important. Yeah. But, how, but I don't know how that helps it. us. We all believe that, Jack. Everyone does, right? So well, how like does it help us? That people, people will step forward and do what they can in society. And everyone should try and help others and encourage so, others. So, so you, I'm sure this is what God intends us to do. So, and do you therefore think we should, we should be happy with about three quarters of a million people coming into this country every year? Uh, no, we, we don't. We, I don't think we need that many people. There's plenty of young, talented mm. uh, and people with the ability to work. I recently had a, a young man who's only just come in 17 talking about going on PIP and he's physically fit. Going on PIP with the personal independence been, payment, yeah. Well, yeah, and, and, well, and what I would you say, so what you say to him, Jack? What would you say to him? I actually, I actually spoke to him and I actually tried to encourage him into becoming an, a, an electrician. Electrician, yeah, well, that's Genuinely, what we need. because that's what I'd have done, give my yeah. time again. Of course you will, or, or bricklayer or something. I agree, but we got rid of all our apprenticeships when we closed down technical colleges and closed down polytechnics and turned them all into universities, which is now responsible for a huge surge of people coming to the country as pupils and bringing their families with them. That, that, it's a major factor, is it not, in, in the build-up of legal migration? It's really important to remind everybody listening that they are not coming here taking council houses, they all paid, and I agree with you there's a strain, yeah. 700,000 people coming in a year. I don't know how many of them go back. That's a an lot, interesting though. point. It's, yeah, well, uh, it, we're talking net migration, aren't we? Coming so in, but looking, we don't... So yeah. we're looking at the number coming in subtracted but we're also shortening the, the time of the uh, visas that allow them to stay here. Up, They're being shortened. The, the joined-up thinking is the key, and that's what I'm hearing from all the callers, that we need a, a bigger thinking policy. We need British people in British jobs. And But the answer isn't... Can we say that? British people in British jobs? Why come? I don't we know. I, 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 it that? sounds a bit discriminatory. I don't think so. I don't know. Am I, I, don't am know. I insulting Le legal, someone? Legal migration as, uh, as well. God. Legal migration normally means that when people come here, they've actually got somewhere to live. If they're students, they've got student accommodation. If they're relatives of people already here, then there is already a home they can move into. So yes. the if, reason if, people if. get so worked about illegal immigration is because when you send, see people land on beaches or small boats, they don't have a plan but when they get course, here. Of course, but that is, that is separate. Yeah. OK, thanks yeah. for your calls. We'll move on. Later, we'll ask if celebrities should stay out of politics. After the break, they are...